since when did we start calling Av brain rot? Since when did we start calling Av Gen Z talk? I don't get it. African American people are not given their flowers enough when it comes to how their culture has impacted other black cultures around the world. And I say this as a daughter of Ghanaian immigrants, as a first generation American, I say this because <laughs> I just find it very interesting. For whatever reason, the mannerisms that African American people have when it comes to AV and the way they say certain words, they're not really credited to African American people. From what I've seen, they're not credited to African American people. They're more so just credited to Black, right? Like, I speak this way, I speak in AV and I live in London. I speak in AV and I live in South Africa. I speak in AV and I live in Nigeria. I speak in AV and I live in Canada, right? But it's not credited to African American people. It just gets blanketed as black culture. And from a pan-Africanist perspective, yes, all subcultures of African culture are African culture. To me, I see it like that. It doesn't matter if you're in the Caribbean or if you are in London or if you are in the States or if you're in Kenya. I feel that all black cultures can be categorized into African culture. Now you can disagree with me, right? However, I do think it's still important to give flowers and give, and give credit where it's due. For example, in Ghana, there are certain words and phrases that are used that come from Nigeria, right? Or in Nigeria, they may say certain words that are coming from a Ghanaian language. But if you ask a Nigerian person who often says the word chale, Chale is a word that means friend, basically, um, but it has a deeper meaning. Anyways, this word chale comes from the Ga language in Ghana, right? But chale is used all throughout Ghana, and it's also used in a lot of Nigerian music and stuff like that. But most Nigerian people know that that is a Ghanaian-derived word, right? Same thing with like Jamaican Patois or Creole that is spoken throughout the Caribbean. If you're speaking Afro-Caribbean Creole, whatever that looks like, most people know that, yeah, that is coming from the Caribbean. But for some reason, when it comes to Av, people don't see it as Av, they see it as Gen Z talk, right? Which is literally not even only when it comes to Black people not acknowledging that Av comes from America, comes from African descendant people in America, but it's also used a lot in other cultures, right? When it comes to other people of color or young and cool people, um, it's like just used and it's like, yeah, I speak this way because I'm a person of color or because they're trendy. What even actually motivated me to add this to this list is I was on TikTok. There was a sound and it was someone speaking in Av and there was a woman that was a person of color and she was like when I'm talking to my parents in brain rot and I was just like since since when did we start calling Av brain rot since when did we start calling Av Gen Z talk I don't get it but I just feel like African American people are not given their flowers enough it doesn't matter wherever you go in this world you're going to find black people you're going to find african descendant people speaking in av or having some type of mannerism that you will generally see in an african-american community or an african-american home <sighs> you could disagree with me this is an unpopular opinion so not everything ancient is good not everything ancestral is good Again, these are my unpopular opinions. A lot of people justify things that they do that may be harmful to them and the people around them because it's ancestral, because their ancestors did it, because their great-great-grandmother did it, or because it's, it's a tradition to, I don't know, let's say, drop a child on the floor head first. It's a tradition, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna uphold it. Does this feel good to you? Maybe it's just how I think, like, I honor my culture 
but like I have to ask myself if it feels good to me like I'm not just gonna do something that I've been told that my ancestors used to do just because they used to do it I may try it and if it doesn't feel good to me I'm not gonna do it we tend to forget that colonization was a thing colonization did not only happen in Africa it happened in a whole bunch of other countries even within Europe people tend to forget that a lot of cultures have been tainted with other people's ideas let's just say for example your great-great-grandmother used skin lightening cream your grandmother used skin lightening cream um, your mother used skin lightening cream so now you're gonna use it because that's just what the woman in your family do does that really feel good to you is that even healthy for you? You don't have to do something just because your ancestors did it, right? Because we have to then ask ourselves, where does that come from? I think we forget that our ancestors were also like human beings that like were also living like human experiences. Like they weren't perfect. Just because someone is your ancestor doesn't mean that they lived a perfect life. Say you have a raging racist ancestor. Are you going to still uphold those values just because they're your ancestor? Just because your great great grandfather was a raging racist, are you going to still practice that? Are you still going to continue to perpetuate that because they're your ancestor? You get me? Saying natural hair is not for everyone is a very strange statement. It's very strange. And I equate it to saying something like, being dark skin is not for me. Being light skin is not for me. What? <laughs> like, I just don't understand. Um, but I do get, because I'm someone that has looked really deep into what people that look like me have gone through, when it comes to their hair, I can understand and have grace for people that say things like that. But at the same time, it's just a very strange statement. Um, and it's very sad that we feel that way, that your natural hair is just not for you. How? You were born with it. You weren't born with your natural hair as a punishment. You weren't born with dark skin or light skin as a punishment. Now, in your family or in your church or in your various societies, your hair looking a certain way or your skin looking a certain way can mean that you're going to be treated differently. But to say that natural hair is not for you is something that I feel like if any, like, if you're someone that has said that, I, I challenge you to unpack that and really sit with that. What does that really mean? Because if your natural hair isn't for you, that could also mean that your eyes aren't for you and your skin isn't for you and your feet aren't for you. You should have been born with size five feet instead of size eight. You should have been born six two instead of five four. You should like, um, I just feel like it gets very problematic. And when it comes to the natural hair community, I personally have just like taken a step back. I know a lot of people follow me for like my natural hair opinions and things like that. But personally, I have just taken a step back um, from that community because I, it's just a very, it's, there's so much trauma and pain and a lot of toxicity within the natural hair community. And I just like to share my experiences and the things that I'm working through because I'm not perfect and I'm still working through a lot of things in hopes that it's going to help someone else anyone that is watching my videos that is also going through a similar journey or transition or is unlearning things so i'm editing and i wanted to add to the natural hair segment um there's a difference between not preferring to wear your natural hair out and saying that natural hair is not for you Th those are two different statements maybe you find it easier in your day-to-day -day life to wear a wig or wear extensions or whatever right and that's cool and that is completely different than saying that natural hair is not for you right because it's on your head so i just feel like that statement is strange but i do also acknowledge that there are people that choose to maybe have their hair pressed out or have extensions or wear wigs and i'm not saying anything to that i'm just saying that you can wear a wig you can have a silk press and if that's how you prefer to wear your natural hair, then have fun and do that. But to say that natural hair isn't for you, I think is a strange statement. 
you can wear a wig and still know that your natural hair is for you because it's what's growing out your head you can wear extensions and still know that your natural hair is for you because it's what's growing out of your head right the same way that if you're dark skin and you want to bleach up your skin and the skin and light and lighten up your skin that's the choice that you're making right but you should still know that the skin that you were born with is for you you choosing to bleach your skin that's between you and you right but even if you are someone that wants to bleach your skin acknowledge that your darker skin tone is what you were born with you can justify it with so many things. Everything can be justified. We could say it's harder for darker skinned people to get a job or do this or do that, or it's harder to do your natural hair, da da da, whatever, right? There's there's a reason for everything, but it's still important to know that this is how you were born into this world. And if you choose to manipulate that, that is your own business but it doesn't mean that it's not for you, okay? <laughs> I had some more unpopular opinions, but I just realized that the last three unpopular opinions I shared were more cultural, um, pertaining to black cultures and African cultures around the world. So I'm gonna end it here because the next two that I have don't have to do with that. And I, I just wanna keep this video like this. And so I'll make another unpopular opinion video, but let me know what you guys think about my unpopular opinions down in the comment section. I love making these videos because I feel like it really creates space for people to say the thing that they feel like they're not supposed to say. Because really and truthfully, a lot of us have these unpopular opinions. We just feel like if we were to share them out loud, we would be ostracized and just treated badly for being honest about how we feel. So I will see you guys in the next video, of course.